Welcome back to The New Normal with Natasha. And during the pandemic, I'm sure there was a reality TV show that you were addicted to. Come on, admit it, it's a guilty pleasure. Whether it entertains you, educates you, or takes you away to some far exotic location, there's an award show happening at the end of June that you're gonna wanna tune into. Here are some award-winning critics. Thanks for being here, guys, from Sacramento, Los Angeles, LA, and Kansas City. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> My first question to you guys is, why is reality TV awards so important to the industry? It's what people watch in real life. Like, <laughs> when you're sitting at home on the couch and you're just trying to, like, you know, pack away from the norms of your everyday life, Man, you're watching reality TV all day, every day, because it's fun, it's easy to watch, and we love it. I concur, and never has there been a more real time than right now. Like, the world is experiencing more real than ever, so uh, it's kind of what we're looking at. Also, I was going to say that a lot of times people think of reality TV as kind of trash TV or your guilty pleasure, but right now there are some reality TV shows that are unbelievably phenomenal. I mean, I was watching one last night that was making me ball my eyes out. So it's kind of the golden age of television, but also the golden age of reality television. That's yeah. so true. I have to piggyback on what Andrew was saying, and just that reality TV has come a long way. We're far gone from the days of the real world. Um, and we now have entered into this era where you really are seeing real people's lives. And I think now more than ever, it's time to celebrate that too. So I think this award show is so important because we're seeing shows that really depict what people and families are going through across the nation. So let's talk about some of the ones that are actually leading in the nominations. We have Cheer, we have RuPaul's Dry Grace, we have Couples Therapy, and we also have Queer Eye. Uh, why do you think those ones are so much more popular than all the other reality TV shows that are nominated? Uh, in terms of RuPaul's Drag Race, which I've watched multiple seasons, that show, it was like watching works of art appear on stage on a weekly basis. So hands down, that show deserves all the accolades it's getting. Yeah, and I don't know about you guys, but uh, I turned to Queer Eye because it's the most uplifting thing on television. I mean, every single episode has me just bawling my eyes out because it's just so damn uplifting. Not to mention... They're good looking. Yeah. They are. It's a completely watchable show. Mark, I love the fact that you came into this Zoom meeting with your own props and your own visuals to support whatever you have to say. <laughs> have you met him? Have you met him? Of course right. he did. Of course he did. <laughs> you, look, you don't want to know all the things I'm doing with my free time during this pandemic. This is, Mark this is, is the poster child for if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Mark, you have one of my favorite favorite reality TV shows that I was hooked on because I was a competitive cheerleader here in Canada. So I love cheer. I was glued to it. Why do you like it so much? Uh, I'd like to go back to the production value on this. The guy that started this discovered, he discovered cheerleading uh, while he was actually following, he was doing his reality series based on football. And I think there's something about that South, South dynamic mixed with cheerleading that makes it a little bit more explosive what i love about it is that it isn't just about the cheerleaders but you go into their personal lives there's some really heartwarming stories this, these are the types of shows people are watching if you if you notice there's a theme they're all uplifting they all motivate and they all connect you know this this is real life that's why it's reality tv it's real can we all agree that reality tv would not have existed if it wasn't for jeff probst He's the I man. mean, he's the, I, I was just looking it up before we got on, but so Survivor premiered March 31st, 2000. Yeah. And he has been in every episode for 20 years. I mean, the fact that that guy has lasted so long on that show is a feat to itself because hosts change so much on all these shows. And Survivor, of course, is like a staple of the industry. Are there anything other than the nominations that are leading the pack that you feel isn't getting enough love? Yeah, I'll jump in. 90 Day Fiance. I don't know if you've watched this hot mess, but I mean, reality <laughs> TV, we, we know that reality TV, the storylines are augmented through editing, but there's no way they've augmented it. 90 Day Fiance is a train wreck from beginning to end. I can't take my eyes off of it for that reason. I just want to say one thing for one show that we've nominated that I think a lot of people haven't really checked out yet. 
And we nominated it for Unstructured Series. It's a show called We're Here on HBO. It features, it's kind of like if you took RuPaul's Drag Race and Queer Eye and combined them into a show. The production value and the casting on the show is unbelievable. So I just want everyone to check that show out because it's amazing. Yeah, my I, fave, I was gonna say my fave of the nominees probably has to be The Last Dance. I think it's the show that took the world by storm during quarantine. And obviously we all knew who Michael Jordan was, but this really up close and personal look at him during that time when he won six championships, I think was just eye out opening and amazing. Yeah, it's also going to set the tone for the future. You're going to see a lot more documentaries like that. I mean, it was so successful. But my favorite category is the travel adventure category. Uh, most people aren't traveling anymore, and I'm stuck at home. No adventure, except through these TV shows. So if you guys are looking to cast who the uh, favorite male and female TV reality host is going to be, who are your faves? Hmm. For, for male, I'm going to say Trevor Noah because he is killing it right now because not only is he informative, he's funny, he's topical, he's good looking, he's, he checks all, he checks every <laughs> single box. Yes. So Trevor Noah is my vote. Okay. Oh yeah, you're, you're killing me because that's exactly what I was going to go with. You pretty much said everything I was going to say. You really <laughs> get to know who's who when they're stripped away of producers, stripped away of production value. And Trevor Noah, within 24 hours of the pandemic lockdown, was in his home, like you said, killing it, crushing it, all coming from right here to right here with nothing in between. Trevor Noah does have a little <laughs> bit of competition, and I would say RuPaul. Oh, that, that was what I was going to say as well, yeah. RuPaul Charles, yes. yes. I, I would I would say though, I feel like Ru's Ru like Ru is very talented and Ru deserves it. But I think right now in what everything we're going through, Trevor Noah, for me at least, is someone who I think maybe outshines Ru a little bit more. He's been clutched during this this very hard time. I mean, we've gone from a pandemic to now social and political unrest in this country, and Trevor's been spot on, his social commentary, his awareness. No, he's been, he's been amazing. Well, we've been talking so much about awards and I feel in my eyes that all of you deserve an award for what you do. And thanks for making the time for the new normal with Natasha. Really means a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. June 29th. Oh, there's so many great reality TV shows, right? And so many categories to choose from. Don't forget to cast your vote at criticschoice.com. Thanks for tuning into the new normal. See you next time.